This shoe is a prime example of where the sneaker market is at right now. So I'm going to be talking about the recently released Fear Air Jordan 4s. And we're going to talk about the shoe game as a whole because personally, I think this is one of the best times to be a sneakerhead. Now looking at the box, as you can see right here, this is going to be a little bit different, but similar to your previous Jordan 4 retros that aren't a OG colorway. They give you a special box to kind of align with the sneaker. So on the top of the lid right here, you're going to have these quotes and everything. This actually comes from the commercial, which we'll get into in a bit. And then you're going to have your white jump man and your white flight with that glossy text right there. Now the bottom half of the box is going to be covered in that all over speckle. It's going to be more of a dark charcoal gray compared to a black. And on the size tag, it reads Air Jordan 4 Retro Black White Anthracite Black size 13 just for me and retail on these things were 215 bucks which already makes me get to start to talking about that part retail is high i get it like if you buy two or three pairs of shoes a month you're spending seven eight hundred bucks after taxes every single month let alone buying four or five or six pairs i understand that's not for everybody and you need to be wise when you're purchasing sneakers so i can see why you say hey i might pass out on this we got a lot of stuff coming up for the christmas time i get that as well but at the same time this is a really fire shoe so i'm excited to show you guys all the details of this sneaker as well oh yeah and if you didn't know by now my name is dj and this is the DNA show. Hey. Now let's then open the lid of the box right here. We have that all over print paper that's gonna match the upper on the lid, which are the same quotes that we saw from the Look Me In The Eyes commercial. And peeling that paper back right here, you have some an additional white paper that wraps around the entire shoe. And then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. So before we get to breaking down this new retro and comparing it to the original version from 2013, you know we gotta go over the history first. So back in 1989, the Air Jordan 4 hit the scene in four different original colorways. You had the white cement, the black cement, the fire red, and the military blue. And 30 plus years have passed and the shoe is still relevant to this day. But a couple years ago in particular, the Air Jordan 4, you could potentially say was at an all time high. I'm gonna pop up the screen on some recent colorways that have released over the past three to five years. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can resonate with those colorways, whether you liked them or you didn't, or you couldn't believe the astronomical prices behind the shoes. At the end of the day, all the kids wanted these shoes, adults were rocking the shoes. Yes, it may have differed between the colorways that people preferred but either way the Jordan 4 was popping but recently over the past year we have seen some amazing colorways some dope materials and the shoes have just been sitting so it makes me ask you guys the same question how do you guys feel about Jordan 4s as a whole are you kind of sick of it because everybody likes it so now you don't and you don't want to have them even though you kind of have an itch for the shoe and you like it but it's like I don't want to get it because everybody else got it or is it like one of the scenarios where it's like I just see it too often I have enough pairs in my collection I don't need any more yeah I wouldn't mind having them but at the same time I got some something that's similar so I don't need to add those and trust me there's a ton of other scenarios as well so I would love to hear you guys responses down below in the comment section but when it comes to the fear pack Air Jordan 4s for me personally I already have the old pair and, <laughs> and I don't know if you guys saw the videos or not but this pair is cooked but when I heard that these were retro on I had to go for them the fear pack originally came out in three different models you had the threes the fours and the fives and those all dropped in 2013 I was able to get the entire pack back in the day when it came out the threes were my least favorite so I ended up getting rid of those the fours as you can see I still have those and the fives I wanted to keep and I hope that they retro to complete the pack but the fives <laughs> funny story I bought them and then I finally got a chance to wear them about a year and a half two years later it might have been three years and i opened the box and it was a size 14 inside the box but it was a size 13 box so the shoes had got mixed up in sizes so i ended up deciding to sell them and over the years i just never have been able to come across a good clean pair at a decent price at this point we've seen the retro of the threes and i have a review on those we have the fours now and everybody's asking for the fives to complete the set so now that you guys know a little bit more about the state of the market when it comes to jordan fours or a little bit about the history of the fear pack what do you guys think about the shoe does that kind of alter how you feel or do you feel the same if not we still got plenty more to go over because the details on these we have to cover today's partner is sneaker throne they have multiple options when it comes to durable and high quality display cases one of my personal favorites is the drop side display case i'm a size 13 and i can easily fit my shoes inside of here and I have hundreds of these stacked throughout my rooms to display my sneakers when it comes to the cases in particular you have four different color options clear black white and red so if you're looking at grabbing one of these for yourself or for someone 
someone else, make sure you guys check out sneakerthrone.com and don't forget to use the discount code DNA show at checkout for 10% off for all your orders. Looking at the outsole, you're gonna have your all white hair and bone traction pattern. You're gonna have a black pod in the front on the ball of the foot and then a center right here around the arch area. And then also a white jump man here at the back end of the shoe because what? You got a jump man on the heel tab. We always know this matches. You'll never see Nike on the bottom with a jump man or vice versa. Nike era right here and a jump man on the bottom. Now wrapping up to the midsoles, this is something that is very similar but not exactly the same. Now again, like I said, my pair is cooked so it's kind of hard to give you guys a comparison. So I'm gonna pop up a photo right here just so you guys can see the shapes of the two shoes and also the color of the midsole. So it's gonna be a slightly darker and then the fade is gonna happen a little bit later as well as the midsole fades a little bit. So just kind of take note in that. We saw the same thing on the Air Jordan 3 when they faded it. It kind of lasted a little bit longer on the previous pair. This is something that a lot of sneaker heads may or may not have seen. Me personally with owning the older pair, this was something that I noticed. So I wanted to make sure that we pointed that out as well. And then you also have your classic Air Jordan 4 speckle all throughout and that's gonna be in white. And these come with an exposed air unit, classic to the Air Jordan 4, but this time it's actually gonna be red instead of like, you know, you see like a black or a white or whatever like that. And even on the older pair, they have a red air unit as well. I think the new one, the red is more kind of like darker or more like burgundy or whatever you want to call it it's just not as vibrant as the previous version now going to the upper this is going to be something that's different than the previous pair i uh, one thing that i can say is obviously you can tell the cut again looking at the photo side by side but the materials you got a really nice new buck all throughout the upper and that's something that is similar to the other pair but the overall cut in the colors are gonna be different. This pair is a lot darker on the top half of the shoe and doesn't kind of blend as much. It's more contrasty when it comes to the colors. And if you look at the previous pair, even though yes, they are worn, you can tell it's kind of like that, that more faded black and then like that dark gray and then the light gray, kind of giving you that medium in between, kind of flow in between the two. And this is a lot more aggressive when it comes to the black here and then going in between these. So it does give the shoe a little bit of a different look and kind of take away some of its character on the top end of the shoe. Now, one thing that I am extremely happy about is they kept that consistency with the color blocking. Now, again, this has the OG cut. Even when it comes to your white lace holes right here, one thing that I can say is yes, it's similar in the color blocking, but this is different with the OG cut. So if you guys remember back in the day, the retros, they didn't have that little triangle right here on the sides. And this is something that is not similar to the OG, but because these have the OG cut, you can see you have these little triangles here, right here on the side. So again, a nice little subtle difference. We've gone over this in the past with the Air Jordan 4 history videos and how they've changed the models and brought that old style back, whether it's the slanted nets or the little triangles on the side or the overall shape and cut or even on the tongue and how that's structured. I like how they brought this about and I hope and pray that they keep this OG style with all the Jordan 4 retros to come in the future. Now there's a cardboard insert right here that goes over the tongue and then behind that you're going to have that same new buck right here all in black with your white patch and you're going to have a black jump man with a black flight and then behind that you're going to have the white material with the black Air Jordan tab upside down classic to the Air Jordan 4 and then the white collar on the inside. Now when you look at the insoles, this is gonna be something that's really different from the previous pair and we saw this same thing on the Air Jordan 3. It's actually an all black sock liner with a white jump man and on the original pair, you had that quote like we saw on the box and on the paper actually on the insoles. So they kept that same theme and that idea but they decided to present it on the box and not actually in the shoe. Now that might have been a small downgrade because they didn't add that on the insoles, but one thing that I can say is, it's not the best insole out there. It's a dream sale compared to a polyurethane, but these insoles are at least better than the previous retro from 2013. So at that part, I guess I can't complain, but you know, I would always prefer the polyurethane instead. So after seeing more with these two shoes side by side and the differences between the models, what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section, different cuts, slightly different shades on the materials and things like that but overall very similar shoe and i am not mad at that i think this is just a new modern upgrade and i'm glad that they're staying on brand i hate when they like get right there and then they like switch something up on the outside of the shoe and it's like bro that's not the same shoe no more like i remember when they did the stealth fives i'm like oh man i had those in high school and then they brought out a, this like it's the stealth but it's not the stealth like why'd they switch the colors but besides all that i asked the people the question what they think you know which shoe is better 
and also if this shoe was fire or trash. And when it comes to the poll results between these two shoes, this is what people said. 39% of the people chose the OG and 61% of the people chose the new retro. I understand why it's been a long time, a lot of new heads, and then again, they did a really good job on this shoe, even though there are some things I would have preferred to had stayed consistent with the upper colors, but either way, solid shoe. I understand why people chose it. Now, when it comes to these in particular, I also posted a poll to see if the shoe is fire or trash because it's sitting on shelves everywhere and it's like people call it a brick or this, that, the other. Everybody's got their terms for the sneakers these days, but I'm like, the shoe is fire. It's dope. I think a lot of people still like it. Again, I think there's a lot of factors as to why people may not be buying it right now trying to catch it on sale because they see they have an opportunity to do it, which is a wise move, I get it. And I even went into the mall and I saw these sitting in a size 13 for retail. Typically the big sizes go and then it's like, yeah, they're sitting on shelves, but it's like, you know, 10 and under or something like that. So to see a big size still sitting, that was definitely a shocker for me. So again, if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do so you can participate in the polls in the future. But this is what the people said. 83% of the people chose fire and 17% of the people chose trash. Honestly, I think that's a really good representation of this sneaker. And I truly think a lot of people that purchase this shoe and rock this shoe, they're gonna get a lot of good outfits off in it, a lot of memories, a lot of good times. They can wear at different part times of the year. As you can see, uh, I definitely got some good memories in these. So that's gonna do it. If you guys enjoyed this video and have any other questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know down below in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in another one. I would never let you down and send my DNA. Hey, the hey, only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. I would never let you down and send my DNA. The only choice I